Hi, I'm Paul Seal from CodeShare.co.uk. UK. Welcome to this, the 14th episode in this series, where I'll show you how to build a website with Umbraco 10. In this episode, I know I said I wasn't doing any more about the block list, but this is like a bonus episode. We're basically going to get previews working in the back office. So you can see the preview of all of these, um, how they would look on the front end, but within this, within the width of this. So uh, let's get on with it. First of all, I just want to say it. the code came from uh, Dave Wusterburg, uh, who wrote this brilliant article for 24 days, and he supplied the GitHub repo for it as well for his code. I've since taken that code. I think I've made some slight alterations, and I've uh, got it working in one of my starter kits. I've not published that yet, but what we'll do we will make those changes on this, and you can get the code that works from this repo, uh, my Umbraco 10 uh, repo here. So I'll publish the code to this GitHub repo, so you'll be able to pick up the code that we do on this, because it might be a bit hard to follow. So um, yeah, there's we don't need to fully understand the code to get it working, but I just want to show you what's possible and where you get the code from to do it. So yeah, really, grateful to Dave for doing this and I think it will change how people use the Umbraco block list. So let's get started then. So I've got two projects open here. I've got my portfolio site um, and and I've got my other one. So we're going to just take this. This is working here. We're going to create this in our other site. So if I just open the other one here. So we're going to create a folder at the same level. So within, uh, so if I create a new folder here, call it composing. Oh, no, that's trying to do it in views. I'm going to select this and then do new folder. Right, so call it composing. And then if we want to create a new file, we'll call it startup composer. Startup uh, composer.cs. And then we'll just paste this in here. And so it's got this portfolio core composers and it's uh, sorry, 24 day cores composers. Um, we'll leave that there. But this core notification handlers, we'll change that to be um, this is going to be clean dot site and just delete that. That's where we're going to store this and then it will call it from here. So that's the next thing we want to bring in server passing notification handlers so i'm just going to copy the name of this file and it is in a folder called notification handlers so again click on the project click i need to just not select the how do i create that folder at that level that's annoying no i don't want it there i don't know how to create it at that level Maybe I create, click on program and then do a folder. Yeah, that would be an easy way to do it. So notification handlers. And then in that, we want to create a file. Again, new file. I'm going to paste that and do .cs. I'm going to copy this and I'll talk you through it. So this is referencing a controllers namespace as well so we'll just update that clean dot site dot controllers this is looking at portfolio actually let's update this so clean dot site dot notification handlers notifications handlers ah maybe that's it i don't know anyway and then we'll create another file at the same another folder at the same level called controllers dot yeah uh, yeah controllers and we will copy the controller as well this one block preview api controller so we're going to add a new file block preview api controller.cs we're going to copy the contents of this and we'll update all the namespaces so you can get these files from the project um, from my github repo instead of it being portfolio.core this was going to be clean.site save that and then on here, this is going to be clean.site controllers and clean.site notification handlers. And then in composing, instead of 24 days, we'll do clean.site composers. 
in our composing folder. Well, that's fine. Should be the same, really. Uh, it's bothering me. I'm going to rename the folder so it's matching composers. Right, okay, so again, we don't fully need to know about uh, composers and everything like that. All we're doing here is just creating these. I'll go into these in more detail on other episodes. We just want to get the preview working. So it should look like that on the first one, the composers file. Then the notification passing handler, that looks like this. And then the API controller is what does all the logic. That looks like this. So then once we've copied those over, the other thing to copy is in the portfolio.site. So in the app plugins folder is block list views. So if I come back to our other project in the app plugins folder and then paste that in there. We should at this point have everything we need. I'm going to stop my site. Just control C and then dot net watch run. We'll just check to see if there are any errors in the console, but hopefully ah, oh, there is an error. Type or namespace name notifications handler doesn't exist in the namespace clean dot site. So did I do it wrong? Notifications handler. Well, it's there. Uh, what line is the code erroring? So it's in composers, startup composer. Composers, startup composer, notifications handler. I mean, it's, oh, clean dot site. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. <laughs> Sorry, right, notifications handler, handlers, clean.site, startup composer, clean.site, notification handlers. Yeah, it does like it. So what is it, what is it complaining about? Error, right, so let's just cancel this, do a .NET build. Let's just see. Is it really complaining? Have I just not saved it? I think I've just not saved it. Try .NET build again. I've just saved it now. All right, no errors, just some warnings about in the API controller, but we can handle that. So we'll do .NET watch run. Get the site up and running again. Okay, we've got the site up and running, and then we'll just reload on the content. So at the moment, the content looks like this, right? And what we want to do is have a preview. So we'll get it working for the rich text editor first of all. So we're going to data types, block list main content, and then we'll do a rich text row, and we'll choose a custom view. So we're going to go into app plugins, block list views, blocks, block preview. Remember, we, we skipped past this before on previous episodes. And then custom style sheet. So we'll just choose from the W root CSS styles. Submit that and save. So for the rich text row, now we should see in here, and we should see a preview for it, which we do. So our, all of our rich text ones have got a preview. So if we want to get the previews working for the other ones, we do the same. Image row, just pick the same thing again. Block list views, blocks, block preview, and then custom style sheet uh, is in the CSS one. So this will be a bit boring while I just set all of these. But while I am doing this, just remember, basically copy those key folders and paste them into your project. That'll be the easiest and quickest way of doing this. But yeah, this is all down to Dave's article. So really grateful of Dave for writing this article and getting it working for us. Custom view, block list views, blocks, 
block preview and then the style sheet one more to go after this and they're all done then carousel row add a custom view block list views block preview add style sheet and finally just select this last style sheet submit and save so let's have a look how that looks now so we go into content and look we've got slide one we've got something went wrong there i think that's the quote one if we click on it yeah that's the quote so something's gone wrong with quote we can look at that we've got rich text we've got an image we've got more rich text we've got the featured items and we've got the faqs so this is all within the back office and you can click on this and it will actually open it so you can edit it and personally i think it's really useful um, a way of seeing the page as you're building it up so let's fix this uh, quote preview one then so if we go into the project uh, I think it's this one here and we need to go to the components and I think I know what the issue is here so basically for some reason it thinks that the settings is null on this and what we can do as well is we can run debugging. So this is something that I went to Code Cabin for at the weekend and I wanted, to, can someone show me how to debug in VS Code? So this is how you debug in VS Code. So you've got this run and debug, click on that. Actually, I'm just gonna stop the site here, but then I'm gonna click on run and debug there, like that, and then I choose which launcher. .NET Core attach, .NET Core uh, launch. So I'm gonna choose launch web. And then I'm going to click on the play button. So this is actually going to run the code, um, run in debug mode via VS Code. So that should mean you can do that on a Mac, Linux as well. So I'm trying to, when working on this tutorial, make it available for anyone really. It's not just people that have got Visual Studio. And Visual Studio is available for Mac now as well, I suppose. Uh, so that's loaded up. So if we go to the back office and reload this and then put a breakpoint on here, click on content. Have we got, yeah, we've got a breakpoint. So if we hover over settings, we've got some static members. So it's type alias is quote row settings. So it can see that it's got this. And if we F10, this is where we get an error. And I'm just gonna click continue on that. So basically we get an error on the, qu on the quote row. We don't have to follow this through. I'm just gonna stop debugging now. So there is a fix uh, just for the back office. So it seems like it's just something that happens in the back office and it doesn't happen on the front end. So what we can do in here, instead of all of this, we can just take this and do settings, question mark dot, text alignment, and then two, question marks and then we just do right I think it is or text right oh no text start let's just do that as a default so if it does think it's null or whatever that's fine we'll just let it just put in text start instead so let's save that and then let's have a look see has that fixed our uh, preview site can't be reached that's fine so we just need to launch it again i'll do it from here dot net watch run there we go it's happy again so let's run it in the back office uh, where's the site reload this content there we go and the quotes in so you get to see the preview of it at least uh, just to check the settings are still working on the front end that one's set to right so if we view this page on the front end yeah that quote is going to the right for some reason it doesn't like the settings on that node but that's okay 
we were still able to get the preview working and in the back office. So we've got previews on everything now. So I just think that's really cool that you can have a previews for the block list. Uh, yeah, and thanks for Callum showing me how to get debugging working on VS Code. It was quite simple in the end. Um, that's it really for this video. Um, if you like the video, please click on like and subscribe to my channel. Um, don't forget you'll be able to get all the code from this Umbraco tutorial uh, GitHub repo. And if you do like the repo, please star it. I can see some people are starring the repo, so they're starting to come through. So thanks for that. Uh, if you want to say thanks by buying me a coffee, you can do. Go to codeshare.co.uk slash coffee. Um, but you don't have to. It's completely free to be able to, you know, watch my videos and learn about Umbraco. And the, and the main thing is enjoy it. And uh, I will see you on the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.